Alright, so I'm recording this as kind of a preface as to what you guys are about to hear. Um, this this video is low-key just kind of a rant video. Like, a lot of the stuff I said was just, you know, off the dome, off the cuff type of stuff. Um, and I would just, it was a topic I wanted to address, but I didn't know how to address. And it just sort of got me a little bit ranty. And my, I don't do rants that much on the channel. And I guess another reason I'm labeling it as that is because it's just a purely opinionated video. So kind of a disclaimer for that as well. And also, I didn't have much time today to really do any type of editing. So this vid is really going to be very old school, you know, back to like how I did my vids when I first started YouTube. You're just going to see the background picture. Not really that many animations, if any at all. And then, you know, the background music and my voice, and that's about it. Make sure you guys tune in tonight at 9 o'clock live on my channel for the Young Gods podcast. And I guess uh, here's my rant. Alright, so somebody, somebody needs to explain to me why in the world Drew Locke and Kyler Murray is getting this much hype, yo? Because it's been for like a couple weeks now, maybe even longer, but at least for me personally, it's only been a couple weeks that anytime I go on YouTube, and since obviously I'm a big football fan, I watch a lot of football content on YouTube, anytime I go there, on my recommended, or you know, like on, I guess, the trending football topics, or even, even in my subscription feed, I'm seeing like mad videos and I'm not gonna name specific names but like I follow a lot of great football channels but mad videos saying oh yo Drew Locke about to take that step forward next year he's about to be one of the best if not the best quarterbacks out of 2019 draft class I saw one saying Colin Murray is gonna take that next step I don't know if you guys heard that I'm recording by my window and a car just honked its horn mad loud but people saying Colin Murray's gonna take that next step. He's gonna be in MVP form, you know, following suit of Lamar Jackson and and uh, Patrick Mahomes. Colin Murray's really gonna, you know, take the league by storm next year. He's gonna come out here, you know, throwing haymakers. He's gonna be that dude next year. Everybody should really be afraid of him. And that's really all I've been seeing for the past two weeks from NFL channels. Colin Murray and Drew Locke apparently taking the next step, but not the regular next step that quarterbacks take. Which is just, you know, improving upon your mistakes from your rookie year. Maybe being a little better with accuracy and other nuances of the game. Nah, nah, nah. The next step, according to these um, NFL video makers, is them just being thrown into the MVP conversation. Which is another part of the thing that I don't get. When did, you know, being excited for a player's progression and getting hype about them become, you know, just automatically they're an MVP candidate? And, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But let's get back to the Drew Locke and Kyler Murray situation. Why is everybody just leaving Daniel Jones out of the conversation? Like, we're really about to act like Daniel Jones didn't have, you know, similar, if not better, stats than Kyler Murray. And we're really about to act as though Drew Locke, even though I think he ended um, his last five games with the Broncos last season, I think he went 4-1, and one, which is definitely respectable. Won't take that away from him. He definitely had a part to play in that as he was quarterbacking the team. But we're really going to sit here and pretend as though Drew Locke is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones and Kyler Murray. Like, and, and I admit, maybe I have my Giants blinders on. Maybe I have my big blue glasses on and I can't see clearly and I'm just being completely biased. But, and I admit that because if the conversation was, oh, Daniel Jones and Colin Murray would be taking that next step. Daniel Jones and Colin Murray would be in the MVP conversation. I probably wouldn't be making this, I guess this is a rant. I probably wouldn't be talking about this right now. You guys wouldn't be hearing anything from me. Because the fact that Drew Locke is in the conversation and you just leave out DJ who arguably had a better rookie season than both of those guys, makes no sense to me. Like, let's not sit here and pretend as though the Denver Broncos were a horrible team last year. They were a bad team. You know, obviously their record says they were bad, but they were not horrible. Let's not forget that the Denver Broncos were 100% as an overall squad, overall roster, especially on the defensive end, which you know helped them out last year, uh, or helped out Drew Locke last year. Let's not sit here and pretend as though the Broncos were not was not a better team than both the Giants and the Cardinals. Speaking of that defense, both the Giants and the Cardinals had bottom 10, arguably bottom 5 defensive last year. I, I would have to look at the Cardinals number, but for sure bottom 10. And the Broncos, I, I don't even have to look at anything to let you know they were at least top 15. Like, let's not forget the Broncos defense, essentially for the past 5-6 years or so, has always been one of the better defenses in the league. 
Let's not sit here and pretend like that wasn't the case, all right? Like, l l let's not forget that before Joe Flacco turned out to be, you know, just completely burnt out and whatnot, there was actually people predicting the Broncos to be back in the playoffs and whatnot because entering the season, they're really their only biggest problem was quarterback play, and they will be back into the postseason. That right there is already tells you just how good the team is, and that helps out Drew Locke a lot. Like, do not forget that, and I'm not trying to downplay Locke, you know what I mean? You, you, look, I'm not going to pull up any type of stats or anything. All I know about him is that he went 4-1. and one. I've seen a couple of games from him. And, I mean, honestly, he doesn't look like... You, just looking at him play, he doesn't look like he's better than DJ or Murray to me. But I digress. It's not like I've done a deep dive into the guy. It's not like I've even watched tape, let alone watch a whole game with him in it playing for the Broncos. So, you know, I digress that. But let's not sit here and pretend as though he wasn't severely helped out just by the fact that he had a way better roster than both Kyler Murray and Daniel Jones. So I don't get why Drew Locke is in that conversation of people saying he's going to take the next big step out of all of the 2019 rookie QBs. And another car is passing by now playing music mad loud because that's just what happens in this neighborhood every now and again. So somebody needs to explain that to me. Is it just because the dude has some better weapons now? Like Cortland Sutton is... A monster and of course they oh, I'm forgetting who they drafted I think they drafted Jerry Judy actually yeah one of the best wide receivers in the draft so to do the sack weapons wise low-key kind of looking like how the Bills built their team with Josh Allen you know built up their defense and then surrounded him with weapons low-key looking like that I can see the comparisons and in fact the Broncos are actually one of my sleeper teams for the NFL season but I'm not out here praising Drew Locke like that and then with Colin Murray my problem with the whole Colin Murray conversation and saying that he's going to jump to MVP type status is be, is purely like there's no way to really predict that. We, yes, in the past two years and maybe you can argue three if Carson Wentz stayed healthy, they're, you know, the MVP guys and in Carson Wentz's case, MVP candidates were guys that were, you know, second year quarterbacks, uh, Carson Wentz, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson. Yes, that has been a pattern for the past three years, but it doesn't mean that is going to actually happen every year, let alone with Kyler Murray, who probably still has, in my opinion, a good amount of way to grow before he even gets close to any of those guys' level. He's still far away from being Lamar Jackson's level, and he's even farther away from being on Patrick Mahomes' level. Those guys just, literally, it's lucky that we got to see two back-to-back -back seasons like that. There's no way I ever see that happening again in the NFL. Kyler Murray, in my opinion, is nowhere near that level of talent, and that's kind of what it comes down to. Those guys were just extremely talented like you're not gonna see that again type of you know seasons and type of material in the nfl i don't think Kyle murray is there yet the dude has great uh qb fundamentals which is something that i didn't know until i went back and looked at him for sure Kyle murray is gonna take a step forward but let's calm down the mvp conversation once again when did hype and being excited for somebody's progression automatically become let's put him into the mvp conversation that doesn't make any sense to me and then there's the um and then this one is definitely a bias on my part, but I'm still going to state my claim anyway. There's a whole thing about just leaving Daniel Jones completely out. Like, if you're going to have Drew Locke in this conversation with Murray, you can't leave DJ out. Just look at the stats. All oh, that's all I'm going to say. And look at his games. If you're talking about flashes and seeing the most potential out of any QB, there's no rookie QB last year that showed more potential than Daniel Jones. And I'm going to give you three games to look at. I'm going to give you the Buccaneers game, his debut, the Patriots game, which a lot of people, you know, laud is one of his worst games ever, but looking up against the defense he was going up against and you look at what he did with certain plays, with staying calm in the pocket, precision plays and whatnot, ultimately it did turn out to be one of his worst games, but I love what I saw from him in the overall game, the Lions game, and there's one other one that's up in my mind, the Redskins game. Look at those three games. And he has more flashes of potential than any other QB, any other rookie QB from 2019. And then there's the stats that back it up. You know, he was, once again, off the dome. I can't remember Kyle Murray's exact stats, but he was either right there with Murray or ahead of him. And he did it in 12 starts. So that's just kind of my mini rant. I want to know if you guys have been experiencing anything similar. Just kind of seeing all the Drew Locke and Kyle Murray talk and no mention of Daniel Jones. Let me know what you guys think, kind of a rant-ish video. Um, put your thoughts down below, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.